Hi all, this is VC here from VC's Academy. In today's class, we will discuss about Pyramid of Energy. In my earlier classes, we have discussed about Pyramid of Biomass, Pyramid of Number and introduction about what is an ecological pyramid. In today's class, we will learn about Pyramid of Energy. And this is the last topic for ecological pyramids. Pyramid of Energy Wood is the source of energy for organisms that are used in the growth and rebuilding of the parts of the body that are constantly wearing out. So what is the main source of energy for organisms? Food is the main source of energy and it helps in the growth and rebuilding of the parts of the body that are constantly wearing out. Food by its nature is the chemical energy and by in its stored form it is the a potential energy. So what is food? By nature, food is the chemical energy and by its nature and it is in the form of potential energy. There are several mechanisms in organisms for continuous absorption of materials for the production of organic material and for the release and conversion of organic material into organic form. Plants absorb the minerals from the soil. So what, there are many mechanisms available in organisms for continuous absorption of materials for the production of organic material and for the release and conversion of organic material into inorganic form. Plants also absorb the minerals from the soil. So if you talk about energy, food is the source for energy which is in the nature of chemical form and it is potential energy and it gives the energy to do work. So there are several mechanisms in organisms to do various activities and it helps for continuous absorption of materials and converting these materials from organic form into inorganic form. Plants also absorb materials or minerals from the soil. Plants absorb minerals and salts through roots and Photosynthesis also plays an essential role for life. So we can say it as the prime source for life is photosynthesis. The energy of sunlight, carbon dioxide and water which of course needed by all living things belong to non-living things. The energy of sunlight, carbon dioxide and the water which are needed by all living things or living organisms which required for making their metabolic activities to do are belonging to non-living things. These can be made available in a suitable form of energy, the food to the world of living things, the animals or consumers only by the green plants which are also called the producers. So these energy which is available in the form of food is given to the living things, animals or consumers or whatever the type is only by the green plants which are called the producers and which are able to do the activity called photosynthesis by which all organisms get food. The food chains and food webs help the transfer of food and energy from the producers to different consumers. So what the food chains and food help? food webs help the food chains and food webs help in the transfer of food and energy from the producers to different consumers so they will help in transferring of the food from one traffic level to the another traffic level or from the producers to different consumers at different levels energy enters the producers in the ecosystem from the sun in the form of solar energy or solar radiation so how the energy enters into the ecosystem or the producers which are present in the ecosystem is through sun by the process of solar energy or solar radiation. No other organisms except green plants and some photosynthetic bacteria due to the presence of chlorophyll are capable of absorbing solar energy and converting them into chemical energy. So we can say 
with no doubt that except green plants and some photosynthetic or chemosynthetic bacteria which have or which contains chlorophyll are capable of absorbing solar energy and converting them into chemical energy no other organism can do this from the producers the chemical energy passes to the consumers from one tropic level to the next through food so how the chemical energy passes from one level to the another level is through food it enters from producers to the next consumers primary secondary and tertiary consumers or from first level to the second level of the trophic levels through food at each trophic level organisms use most of the food energy that they assimilate into their bodies to fulfill their metabolic requirements performance of work growth and reproduction so at each level or at each trophic level what happens organisms use the most of the food energy that they get assimilated into their body to fulfill their metabolic requirements like performing of work growth and reproduction but can they maintain all the energy within themselves no biological energy transformations are inefficient or a substantial proportion of metabolized food energy is lost or unused as heat so what happens here as the organism performs various metabolic activities some sort of energy is lost or unused in the form of heat energy only a small fraction goes to the eater at the next trophic level so for example take 10000 kilocalories are produced by the producers the primary consumers will get 1000 kilocalories and the secondary consumers get 100 kilocalories and the tertiary consumers get 10 kilocalories this we can say that the decreasing rate of energy flow only a small fraction goes into the eater of the next level organisms are not different from man made machines in this respect so machines or organism whatever may be all will lose some certain amount at each trophic level that's all about the pyramid or the ecological pyramids thank you hope you all understood the concept